All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending on where you're joining from. The colleagues, welcome to this um, fourth edition of the um, SFI Science Seminar Series. I welcome you um, from every country you are joining from. Um, this evening promises to be um, captivating, insightful, as usual, as we have heard previously. So please um, tight your belt, as they say, as we take the journey. Our speaker is already on board, and I'll be bringing her on board at the right time. But please um, relax this evening, um, and um, I believe that we'll be able to finish in time um, today and send you home to prepare for the week ahead. Um, my name is Bright Warren. Um, I am the, the convener of this platform, the founder of um, the African Science Frontiers Initiative, ASFI as we call it. So I welcome you. I am a professor of epidemiology in respiratory diseases and allergology. Based at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. Um, so I welcome you and I will ask my co host, um, Dr. Eman Sob, to say a few words before the journey starts. Eman, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to ES5 family. I am Iman Sof. I am Associate Professor of Respiratory Medicine at Al Azhar University, Egypt, and uh, currently based in Saudi Arabia, Taiba University. Uh, I am the Director of Science and Communication for African Science Frontiers Initiatives. Uh, it's our pleasure to meet you all here today virtually and I'm looking forward to meet you in person future events and uh, welcome our speaker Anna uh, it is our pleasure to invite here today and thanks for accepting the invitation and the participating today thank you everyone all right thank you thank you so much Eman and colleagues as usual um yeah you are muted at entering, and that is because we record this and I would like to minimize background noise. Um, I encourage you to use the chat box. Tell us who you are, tell us where you are joining from. And um, yeah, you can say whatever you want to say on the on the chat box as far as it is collegiate enough. Um, so please use that. There are many connections that are usually formed from this opportunity. So please make use of that. And um, yeah, so this is what we have this evening. I will present, um, I will make a few introduction and then I will present the speaker to you. Um, the, the ASFI Science Seminar Series has been running since 2000. And um, twenty one since two thousand and twenty one, I've been running it, and so it has been a great opportunity to exchange ideas, to raise conversations that will support African um, science, African scientists, and to continue to motivate us as a people. Each year we have. A theme we are working with, and this year the theme is Innovation in Research Africa's Panacea. Uh, we have been taking the journey, and this is the fourth edition. The seminar series are held um, each month, um, the last Sunday of each month. Um, today's topic is Innovation Research Pitfalls, How to Avoid Them. And we have our speaker, I'll be introducing at the right time. For now, um, some of you may be joining for the first time and you're wondering 
um, what SFI stands for. Um, SFI, African Science Frontiers Initiatives, um, recognizes the um, important role of science in societal development and nation building. And um, one of the things we emphasize on this platform is the need for African scientists to move from the back seat to the front seat because there is no nation that has developed where scientists sit at the back seat. And we have sat at the back seat for too long. So ASFI is one of the voices, it's one of the platforms that aims to um, awaken African researchers and to support capacity building of African scientists. So our vision is to raise the next generation of African scientists who have the right competencies to drive Africa's developmental and transformational agenda through innovative scientific research. For those of you who don't know, who don't know us, who have been in existence for four solid years, four solid years. When I mean four solid years, um, it's because of the impact we have made and seeing that African scientists um, from every country, every country, I would say um, there is no country SFI has not reached. It's a visual platform as you have it, and there we can see the hunger, we can see the, the support of African researchers from every country, and that encourages us to continue to move on. So our mission is to instill excellence in African science through competence acquisition, capacity building, and career development. We want to contribute to African science that tackles Africa's developmental challenges. We have different programs. One of those is what we have this evening, these seminars, and we have workshops. Uh, some of those workshops are um, uh, what we had on Friday. We have the um, uh, research tips and tricks, the SFI research tips and tricks. We call it one hour research clinic where topical issues are presented. Are presented. That happens every month, um, every last Friday of each month. And then we have other workshops that happen as well. And some of those I will say here. And we have hands-on courses, hands-on trainings that cover the full spectrum of scientific research from issues of question formulation to communication. And the SFI courses are quite popular, are quite popular, and people come and they benefit their hands-on, which means that you attend and you can use them with immediate effect. We also have... Um, a robust mentoring program, um, which currently is exclusively reserved for um, SFI members. SFI members. Uh, so we call it match mentoring, in which junior researchers or junior scientists are matched with more experienced ones for the purpose of support for career development um, and, and um, scientific know-how. We also have um, research activities. We conduct different research programs in which we gather um, knowledge. We gather knowledge um, from African scientists. And what we use that is to be able to generate um, agenda for our programs. Uh, once we identify areas um, that, that require attention, we can formulate programs around that and bring them on board. All right. So, um, yeah, this the seminar series, um, we're on the fourth, the fourth um, edition. And the next uh, edition will be making innovation research work, the stakeholders and their roles. Just to mention, I will speak about this later on, but just to mention that the, the fifth edition in May will be an open discussion, which means that 
everybody will participate. Everybody who joins will participate. When we'll come, we'll direct your how it's going to work out, but we want everybody's voice to be heard. We want everybody's voice to be heard. Um, we're going to divide people into different breakout sessions to and give them issues to discuss because we want to ensure that these issues are issues that affect you. So please don't fail to join on the 26th of May. All right. And so, yeah, what I mentioned, Dr. Maros research tips and tricks. Um, we just had the 25th, the 25th edition last Friday, which means that we have had it consecutively for two years and a month and counting. Um, this year, this year, we, we want to beyond what we do within the four corners of the, the university and our research institute to touch on areas that are not commonly touched. All right. If you go to the SFI um, um, YouTube channel, you see our last our, our previous programs and you see the topics we have covered since we started the research tips and tricks. Um, this year, we're taking a different route, not to teach you how to do research, but to look at um, non-research virtues that actually have impact on your research. So the theme we have this year is scientist success virtues. And we are covering different areas. Um, last Friday, we looked at curiosity, curiosity. In May, we are looking at ignorance and we look at failure in June. And so we go through the whole of this year um, looking at things that are essential, sometimes are ignored, but essential in helping our research. These are uh, SFI um, courses that are outlined for this year. We have covered reproducibility. We have done systematic reviews and meta-analysis. We are currently on research quality, productivity, and impact. And the uh, research, the, the data analysis course is coming in July. We have ethics that will be organized, will be informed. We have um, art of science leadership, research funding, and art of scientific uh, writing and publishing also scheduled for the remaining part of the year. Some of you have taken, um, if not most of these courses, and uh, you have great testimony. So those who have not been part of this, I encourage you, join the bad wagon, don't miss the opportunity. Yeah, so this is the um, um, the flyer for the um, data analysis course. Uh, it's out there, out there. So please um, make sure you join, make sure you join. I promise you, you will be happy that you did. Yes, um, following the success of the um, conference and bootcamp, ASFI conference and bootcamp we had last year, we have already scheduled the um, 2024 conference and bootcamp um, in November. And lots of work are going behind the scene um, to make sure this comes to pass. We have the theme, revolutionizing perspectives, unleashing innovation in African research. So please um, um, do well to join us, do well to join us. Have the sub teams that are there. Um, information will be coming out soon about the abstract submission, about the programs, We'll be reaching out to you soon with that, but please mark your calendar. Um, this I will say hip 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 hooray. The ASFI long awaited ASFI research journal. Um, the website is ready now. The website is ready. Um, soon we'll be sending information on uh, manuscript um, submission. The first issue that will be published, the supplement, quality supplement, are the abstract that were presented in the ASFI 2023 
conference and boot camp for those who be out in May. And then the first issue we plan, the first issue of the journal will be around around um, August, around August. So there will be a call for submission of papers. Um, SFI RUJ, uh, which is a short form, is a multidisciplinary journal. Um, the world is becoming multidisciplinary in nature. And we want this journal to be a platform where research from different fields can be published, um, either combining a disciplinary um, expertise or um, individual discipline. So it means that whatever research you have done can be published in this journal. Our goal is to set the pace for excellent research publishing in Africa. And those who are on our, those who are on our um, mailing list, you have received this today. If you are not on our mailing list, please, you can you can send you can write your email on the chat box. We will collect it. If you don't receive our monthly or bi monthly um, um, newsletters, please put your email there. We will include you and uh, you'll be getting that. So we send this out today, expression of interest. If you want, we need associate editors. We need sectional editors. We need reviewers. Um, and then we have sent this out. If you have experiences in being an editor of a journal, being a reviewer, please indicate interest. If you don't have the experience and you want to develop experience, we'll have what is called intern editor, intern reviewer in which because SFI is a capacity building platform in which we want to attach you to experienced ones to guide you through this process so that you can learn and then sooner or later you can become useful for us in playing this role all right so please um the my colleagues will be putting the links on the chat box, take it and um, indicate interest. All right. Yeah, so we have the survey on research misconduct still ongoing. If you have not completed this, it takes only 10 minutes. We want to know what is going on in Africa. I want to know um, the, 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 um, um, the nature, the nature, the, the, the level of research misconduct in Africa. Most of the information and data we have across the world are coming from the Western countries. Very little is known about what is happening in Africa. Does it mean there is no mis research misconduct in Africa? Well, many of the colleagues who have interacted with this said no, it's, it's quite a lot. We want to document that. So please um, take a few minutes and help us to complete this form. Help us to complete this survey. Okay, so this is the thing we are working with this year. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, why talk about innovative research in Africa? Um, because research is the bedrock, as I mentioned, of societal development. This is UNESCO mantra in which they have articulated that science or research is the greatest collective endeavor, and through it, um, it ensures longer and healthier life, provides medicine, provides water, helps to grow our foods, provides energy, makes our life fun. In essence, research must respond to societal needs and global challenges. Um, so Africa, Africa um, lags behind in many developmental, developmental um, indicators, indicators indicators Africa from poverty to, to clean water to, to electricity to, to internet Africa lags behind. Hubert Bissen says the challenges faced are colossal and complex and we need to put the best brains together. We need collaboration, we need uh, sharing of knowledge and information. We need open science approaches. To benefit from the wealth of resources we have and to address the challenges the continent is a bold strategy and science, technology, and innovation need to be at the core of our strategy. So we have started 
by asking the question, what is innovation? And we're taking the topic through um, different layers. And today we're looking at the pitfalls. We're looking at the pitfalls. All right. So um, I will soon introduce the, the speaker. Um, use the chat box. If you have questions, please put it there. We will be um, showcasing your questions at the end of the, the presentation. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, please join me in welcoming the speaker for this evening's um, um, seminar series, Dr. Anna Matros Goseres. She is a current executive director, directorate of research, innovation and partnerships at the Namibian University of Science and Technology. And she is the Southern African Research Innovation Management Association president elect. She's a seasoned professional with extensive experience in research, innovation and partnership development. He established the Project Services Unit at the Namibian University of Science and Technology, leading the grant management function, developing robust monitoring, evaluation, and assessment processes. She leads the transformational evolution process from Project Service Units towards the Directorate of Research, Innovation, and Partnerships. As Executive Director of the Directorate, he is responsible for leading and overseeing the university's research agenda, fostering a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship and establishing strategic partnerships with key stakeholders. He's committed to advancing knowledge, knowledge creation, promoting interdisciplinary collaboration, and driving impactful research outcomes that contribute to societal development and economic growth. In particular, she is instrumental in the establishment of Technology Transfer Office, Entrepreneur Hub, and Postgraduate Studies Development Center, in addition to the research development and sessions, with an emphasis on university industry partnerships across the research and innovation value chain through High Tech Transfer Plaza Select and the Social Innovation Hub amongst others. Dr. Matros Coseres areas of expertise include water sciences, integrated water resource research and management, water energy food nexus research, policy review and analysis, water financing and economics ecosystems valuation and development, global change uh, related research and management. She's a multi-skilled researcher skilled in evaluation assessment of various regulatory and investment tools, mechanisms, systems, and processes, in particular in Namibia, England, Ghana, Tanzania, and Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming our, our speaker for this evening, um, Dr. Anna Mastros Goseres. Dr. Anna, the floor is yours, please. Good evening, and thank you so much, Professor. That was quite a mouthful. Um, and it's always so interesting, you know, when people are introducing you and you're thinking, I don't actually know who he's talking about. <laughs> but it is a pleasure for me to, to be chatting. I was telling... Um, I was saying that I will use this platform as a chatting platform because for sure, I don't know the, all the pitfalls, but I I, I believe um, I could share a few experiences and from there we could have uh, a meaningful conversation. So thank you so much again for uh, the invitation and uh, it's lovely to be uh, in a platform to be able to share um, experiences of this nature. And like I said before, we started that you are doing absolutely uh, a stellar job at trying to promote research and innovation in Africa. Thank so you. allow me to share my screen um, very quickly and uh, good evening in, in Namibia. It is good evening um, yep. for us. 
Um, and good evening to everybody on the platform. Allow me to quickly share my screen. Okay. One second. Hmm. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, we can see it now. The the right screen. I have so many screens open. Yeah, the right one, your presentation. Okay, perfect. So um good evening again. Um, to all. And like I said, I would like to chat a little bit about some of my experiences from the Namibia University of Science and Technology and perhaps some of the Southern African um, experiences um, with you this evening. Uh, the Namibia University of Science and Technology, just very briefly for those that may not be um, familiar with it, is basically um, became a university a few years ago in 2015. We were uh, the Polytechnic of Namibia, and then we transformed into uh, the Namibia University of Science and Technology. It's, it's, it's essentially still quite a young university. Um, let me uh, stop sharing my screen uh, just to share, save on bandwidth. Uh, my video, I mean. So, um, so we were we are essentially still a young university. So I think many of you would probably be in better positions to share also some of the research innovation pitfalls. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, um, Professor um, Professor Bright Nawaro, let me just basically also just very briefly share with you and the colleagues. I'm trying to move to my next slide. And I'm not able to. Maybe you can stop sharing and start again. Oops, there we go. Uh, yep. So I will basically talk a little bit about the research innovation value chain. Um, and, and the way we understand it here in the University of Namibia, the Namibia University of Science and Technology, uh, sorry for that. And then I will, I will look at the impact journey because ultimately it all comes that the research innovation really comes down to impact. Um, and then I will just go through some of the ways how we are trying to address it. And then I will share a few um, tools that I think might be useful for us to discuss. Now, having said that, um, allow me to just perhaps talk about our university. So we have got four faculties Um four faculties and roughly about 15,000 students enrolled for this particular um, academic year. And we've got these four faculties and ultimately, and what I want to always um, refer to when we're talking about an academic setting is that I would like to believe that all of us from a university perspective is doing research um, and doing or fulfilling our respective mandate to have local impact uh, with regional relevance and ultimately global recognition. If you agree with me that this is fundamentally, mainly while we are sort of doing what we're doing in the research and innovation space. So within that particular sort of three um, areas, that we ultimately want to um, obtain, our four faculties are really geared towards uh, setting ourselves um, in or gear, gearing up for that particular purpose. Now, having said that, um, Mr. Chair, um, I, I also wanted to just indicate that when we're talking of innovation within the NAST context, our innovation also speaks to um, um, stimulating and creating uh, entrepreneurial culture. So the innovation is, 
is, is inclusive of entrepreneurship. Um, so basically, um, I will talk to it a little bit later when I when I share the value chain. But just to mention that, and that in that entire innovation sort of entrepreneurial cultural development space, we are then looking at how can we create intellectual property value for intellectual property and provide a framework for that. And I will talk to that also a little bit later on, but maybe just to put it out there that this is but this is the context in which I will then be making uh, today's presentation. Now, when we started, uh, Professor Nwaru, you said that um, let's put Africans in the driving seat. And I actually wanted to talk about my, I wanted to put the talk in this space into a car. So it's absolutely befitting that you wanted to put us in the driving seat. And I said, um, you know, you don't have to read the long text on the side, but let's imagine um, that impact is our final destination, where we want to go to eventually, right? And knowledge exchange is our car. And we as the researchers are getting into the car and we are now ready to drive where we believe impact is and where we can make a difference, right? But all along, and this is criticism that we've been getting all over, basically uh, saying academics are doing research for academic purposes. I don't know who in the room has never had that expression of saying, oh my goodness, academics again with the publications and so on. So this is my analogy to say, we are doing research and we are driving this car. And for as long as we go driving and we're never getting out of the car, it really doesn't mean much. Uh, and that is where I want to pitch this particular talk tonight to say, um, whatever road you're going on, um, and as you're driving past, um, you can, and, and if you are not really um, getting out of the car and relating to what is on the ground as you're moving forward, then really we don't really have much to show for the journey that we are taking. And so I want, I want you to, Keep that in the back of your mind as we're going forward. We'll come back to our driving um, um, situation shortly. But at least, like you said, um, Mr. Che, we are able to at least put our seatbelts on and now we can start. And I can just take us through basically the research landscape that we are looking at. And I want to make use of the Namibia University of Science and Technology as an example. Um, as, as this is um, very close to where we are operating. And this is the most um, closest example I can actually um, talk about. So as we are driving our car, uh, basically we are looking at the research um, areas of focus within Namibia. And these are the areas that are most critical for us in our country context. So for those of you that know Namibia, we are really one of the driest countries uh, south of Sahara. So we have a few security challenges. We have water security, energy security, food security challenges that are really dire. And that is where we are putting our efforts when it comes to institutional research. Now, every faculty like that I shared before, um, have their specialized areas, but these are the institutional areas where all the faculties have to converge to be able to do interdisciplinary research, right? And so we are looking at these particular areas and not to even mention the whole um, aspect of digital security. So I'm not going to go through all the areas, but just to for you to understand the kind Kind of destination that the Namibia University of Science and Technology is driving towards in this car that I just mentioned to you. Um, and when we're driving in this car, what we are basically following, and now I would like to again come back to what we do in our directorate. So our directorate is then responsible for research, innovation, and partnerships, like I mentioned in the beginning. But we are responsible for this particular value chain, and I would like to put that into context. 
to say, and this is the value chain that we all know already, um, what we are looking at particularly in our, in our directorate is then looking at research or the pathway of research all the way to marketplace. And we are responsible for each one of those wheels. Again, we are in the mode of driving. So we're talking of wheels. And we are looking at how do we, when we start with um, innovative research, and this is what we are looking at promoting uh, throughout four faculties that we are serving. And we are basically saying, look, if you're looking at a problem, so because we are a University of Science and Technology, we are predominantly applied. So everything that we're doing, we're really looking at how do we engage industry in particular or entrepreneurs or some of our partners. So it's really partner or demand driven in that sense. And we are looking at it now. All of us on this platform knows that research is, is, is quite an intensely personal activity. If you're thinking of your own research at the moment, right? And it's really dependent on the ideas and the imagination of individuals or group of individuals. Um, and therefore, um, our office has that, I would say, exciting function to be able to draw out this personal passion of the researchers and take it to the next level, which is either ideation or concept design for R&D, et cetera, as we go down the value chain. Now, I started off saying that we do also um, look at entrepreneurial culture. Now, what we're doing in the university is looking at how are we from the onset of the research trying to um, promote the impact literate mindset and that is really looking at every researcher and asking them where is your destination remember we had our framework we had our areas in which we are looking at where do we go to but we need to understand before you even start with your research on the onset, what is your destination? How do we get there? And is it commercialization of the research or um, where? what would be the value addition after you do it? So imagine you are in this car and you're driving and you're not getting out of the car. What would be the point? And imagine the amount, the value that it will do for you if you do decide to get out of the car. So, uh, in that, in that particular space, what we have done is we have also um, created a technology transfer office and our technology transfer office is really looking at how do we commercialize research, um, how do we protect our research, um, really taking uh, awareness raising sort of advocacy approach around uh, intellectual property and the different types that we can get. And then also obviously trying to promote um, dissemination and use or uptake of the research that we're doing. And then obviously we're focusing also on the on the financial modeling of that. So we do incubation services. We have what we call, it's no longer entre entrepreneurial hub, but we are looking at a social innovation hub. So we are just in the process of setting it up because we have already uh, set up what we call a technology innovation hub. Um, and we are having sort of the feeling that um, a lot of the social scientists are feeling um, that they are left out. And technology will always be a common denominator for all the work we do at the university. But we are looking at setting up a social innovation hub so that we are able to then also just bridge that um, um, that particular bridge in when it comes to incentivizing and including all the researchers irrespective of the discipline that they are they are in and many of you as soon as I show this um, people or at least and I hope they are not on the line my executive committee or the vice chancellor will be asking so Anna how much money have you made this year from research and this has always been a discussion to say, um, are we talking of income or are we talking of 
impact. They both start with an I, but we have to be very careful of what is it that we want to do at the end of the day. So this is an ongoing conversation to say, um, really, it, we are focusing on generating the impact for the university um, and not necessarily uh, prioritizing in, income um, for that. And I mean, there are other universities that can speak to having that. Now, as I was saying, so we are still in the car, remember? We are still in this car and we're still driving. And we say, what would be the road signs that will guide us when we're talking about uh, research or innovative research? And we've developed what we call the 366. So 366 um, enabling indicators. So the three is first talking about the outcomes. Uh, so the output, the outcomes, and the impact indicators. So we always have those three that we that we have um, that we 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 sort of have in the background, and that is what we measure all of the research. So we need to be able to when whenever the researcher comes through, we are saying, okay, what would be your output? We need to understand that they that we are looking at a bigger outcome and ultimately the impact of what we're doing. So from the onset, like I said, we're looking at that. Then we're looking at the six um, areas again. Overall, before we even look at the research, we say, okay, do we, so the first thing is obviously the impact, that, that must be the compelling driving destination. Then we look at the infrastructure. Infrastructure. Do we have the necessary infrastructure? Uh, because we don't want researchers to start the research and then say, "But oh, um, we don't have this and we don't have that." Then we look at the income. Like I said in the beginning, we are looking at what would be the incentives and what are maybe the funding uh, modalities around that. And then we look at the financing again, grants. Um, and so forth in our office, we particularly work with grants and contract research elements. Then quality is something that we have vouched that we never compromise upon. And then obviously we look at the capacity, not necessarily in any of that particular order, but as long as we focus on those six elements. And then the next six is the areas that I mentioned to you, or the focus areas that we have at the university. So just to maybe, and I will not, uh, I promise I will not talk about all of these. So we always have the three areas linked to the six around and then the, the additional six, six thematic areas. So whatever we do at the university, these are then our road signs that we follow to ensure that the car stays on course. And now the way I'm saying it's not that easy, of course, it's, it's, it's never that easy, um, but we are basically looking at or trying to have this, and I call it the impact literate mindset from the onset, so that you understand the direction in which you're going. So we don't start, and we have experienced it quite a bit, where we start with research and we ask these questions that are on the slide along the way. And, and so we, so, so that really sometimes results in research, you know, ending, ending halfway or research not, you know, making it to the destination that we are in, um, thinking of going to. Uh, but these are really some indicators that I would like to share with you. And of course, we can have a conversation around that to say, um, are these working and how effective is it and how are you monitoring it? But this is basically our enabling indicators to ensure that our research finally gets to that um, impact that we, we so much desire it to go to. Now, again, we are still in the road, we are still thriving. So I wanted to maybe just put this at a national level. So from a university perspective, we were asked about two years ago, we were asked by our late president, um, uh, May Sol Roy said, please, um, called our vice chancellor and asked him to say, look, you're a university of science and technology. What are you doing to ensure that the entire country becomes 
stack ready because we are all talking about the 4IR, we are all talking about te technology. So what are you doing as a university? So what we did is we did a heat map to understand where we are in terms of the national rollout. So for, for those of you, this is the Namibian map and the university is in the center where the heat is at the moment. So that's where most of the technology is currently. Um, and so, so we just to understand very, very, um, you know, at, on, on, at a first glance where we are in terms of regional inclusivity as a country and as a university, what do we do? And then we told the president, okay, after we have done the study, we said to the president, so president, imagine we are in the car and we like driving, so we're talking about cars all the time. Um, and he said, uh, and we said, president, if we take a journey throughout the country right now, um, and we and we drive at the current speed that we are driving, we will not make it. So we've increased the speed limit of the road to 366, which is, remember, the indicators that we had. And that's actually where we started developing these indicators to say we need to drive at that pace so we can no longer go on 120. We are increasing to 366, the speed limit, because that's how fast we need to do to be able to ensure that the, all the country turns Red, basically. And if we need to do that, we also need the following road signs along the road. So we need to have agility. You know, we need to have operate in a, in a space where we are able to change, we are able to integrate, and whatever we're doing remains relevant at all costs. But for that to happen, we need to have a conducive legal framework. We need to have, for example, some of the the smaller signs on the road, we need to have clear m &E systems. We need to look at, uh, and this is something maybe we can have a conversation with, to share with other countries how that is, uh, because we were introducing a tax levy for research purposes, because research investment in Namibia currently from a national perspective is less than um, 2%. It's 0. I, I, I need to be double, I need to be very correct, but I think we are really on a 0.9 percentage in terms of our GERT uh, contribution um, to research. So we need to be able to look at those. We need to have a technology and the innovation strategy so that ultimately what we are striving for and what we as a university can do is to make innovation in Namibia for the world and beyond. Now you will see the sustainable development goals are up there. And we are saying we want to strive to make sure that we are, like I, like I mentioned in the beginning, globally relevant. So within the sustainable development goals, but also following the Africa Agenda 2063. And because um, for, for, for our purposes, that is where we would like to make the, uh, the biggest impact. Um, at this point, with our partners, um, as much as we are Afrocentric and one of our strategic goals in our uh, strategy is talking to Africa and how to be become more um, conscious on the continent to do research and to partner, um, that is something that we would like to do. So imagine something that is made in Namibia and you're using it in Nigeria, for example. That would be um, a glorious day for us at the university, and if, especially if there is research that we are able to then, um, within our 366 um, indicators, can bet, can bet on. Um, Mr. Facilitator, so since we are driving, I thought of maybe just um, sharing again a speedometer. Uh, and this is my third last slide uh, so that we can have a little bit more time to discuss. And looking at the topic that you've given me to say, look, talk about the pitfalls. What are your experiences when it comes to all of what I've literally just shared with you in the shortest, in the shortest time? So, if we look at a toolkit, and there are eight tools in the bonnet of the car. Remember, we're still driving. <laughs> and there are eight tools in the bonnet of our car, or in our toolbox. 
Um, and we say, so the first tool would be, like I said, let's look at the impact literate mindset. So from the beginning, uh, set our goals so that they are smart and it's easier said than done. And we've all set smart goals. And at the end, there's always a limitation here or there. But we have experienced some of these pitfalls where we don't have clear research objectives and um, the efforts are scattered and it really uh, uh, leads to ambiguous uh, results, um, especially where we are not really looking at um, clear um, sort of documentation. And that so that's one of the tools is really, let's look at your impacts before we even start. And then we can plan according to that. One of the biggest but force I've also experienced in, 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 in my time at the university, which I don't want to divulge because it might be, um, I'll be part of the furniture very soon, but it's looking at our ethical considerations when we're looking at research. And we have various levels of ethics. And I, and I see one of your, your training uh, topics is on that. So that's fantastic. But it's one of the pitfalls I, I, I look at and I think that if we are able to put that in our toolbox um, as we're driving this journey um, and really look at some of the guidelines because we've got institutional ethical considerations to take care of. First, let me step up, take a step back. We have individual um, ethical considerations to, to understand also from a researcher perspective. And that is where the mentoring um, really comes in very strongly. And that is also where one of our six elements of quality comes in. Then we've got obviously our national uh, considerations to take care of. And if we don't, if we compromise on some of these elements, we will really have um, uh, implications, ethical implications. So that's one of the things that I would strongly recommend to put in the toolbox as you're driving on this particular journey. Risk management is something that we take for granted, and it's something that my office in particular is quite strong on. Um, we, we, we look at our research and we look at our grants and we look at our contract research, and we, we really, um, like I indicated, try to encourage researchers to, to have due cognizance of potential risks very early on so that like i said we don't drive along this road we get a flat tire and we don't have the right tools to fix the flat tire and that would be the end of the research literally because you said st you're stuck in the desert with with the flat tire and yeah you know i don't want to do into what can happen to you in the desert uh, maybe desert is not maybe i should say the wild or something else like this uh, but um, that's one of the pitfalls that um, I would really like us to guard against. And of course, funding opportunities. Now, when you talk about funding opportunities, we all know that the more research grants you get, once you have a track record developed, the more you can attract. But one of the pitfalls around that is to ensure that you put your own agenda on so we need to, as institutions know, as researchers know, what is the institutional position on certain elements um, and not just agree to any other partner that comes on board and say, I want to partner. Absolutely fine, let's partner, but let's ensure that there's a mutual beneficial um, result at the end of the day for all of us and, um, and we are able to address some of these. Because as you all know, and this is something we can again spend days of discussing, is um, we've been talking about equitable partnerships at the end of the day, but nowadays we are more or less talking about inclusive partnerships so that we know that we are all doing this with knowing each other's context because I can partner with somebody, let's say from South Africa, for example, knowing that resources are not equal, but knowing that I will benefit equally from what is put in. And I hope you understand what I mean with that. And then, of course, in our toolbox, as I said, 
Now, from this part onwards of the of the speedometer, we are looking at sort of the impact side of it. So um, the others were more, let's be aware of these elements, but let's also be aware that we are able to lead and we are able to make a bit conscious influence on policy uh, so that we are able to influence that particular one as well. Of course, I mentioned that at the University of Science and Technology, we're very strong on industry engagement. We have got quite a good reputation built up with it. And but we need to always, when we start our research, have the intellectual property potential in mind. So as we're driving the car, as we start the key of the car, um, remember the car was knowledge exchange if you can still recall, right? And we were the researchers behind the wheel. Um, so we need to understand that what, what are the different IP that I can generate from this research or that the university can generate collectively or the partners can generate collectively. And here we can share many, many examples um, we've been quite successful on getting our one of the biggest telecommunications partners online uh, on board, and, and they have actually built the innovation center. Um, so we are doing a lot of research with them. A lot of the um, sort of applications and so on are coming from out of that software development and so on. But are we protecting it? And to what extent can we protect it depending on who's putting in the resources? Right. And then the last two, I will just speak to um, at the same time. Basically, it's the evaluation. We need to always be able to collect the right information to be able to look at that. And we have experienced, you know, statistics. Really, it's always a problem when we come to research, poor documentation, for example, and so on. But we really need to look at how do we evaluate our research at the end of the day, again, with the impact in mind. And then the last one, obviously, is looking at public engagement and networking. And again, I can, this is maybe speaking to the converted, but again, intentional networking, intentional partnerships, um, um, is really something that I think we should be looking out for. And I already spoke about the inclusivity of partnerships. And, and so therefore, I think these are what I can recommend, uh, some of the pitfalls that we can look out for and some of the tools that we need to have in the car as we are navigating this particular road. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I wanted to maybe just again bring it home to say um, you are really doing a very noble course when it comes to looking at how can we uh, researchers connect on a continental level, how do we build that capacity, and like we say, you know, the 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 old proverb that says that it's it's not the strongest of the species that survive, and we all know this, it's really the ones that are responsive most to change that survives. So my second last slide, um, ladies and gentlemen, fellow researchers, I'm back at our car. So if I take the car analogy further and I say, so now let's look at the car again. And we're saying funding is the fuel for the car. Remember funding also has their own agenda when it comes to the destination. So choose your funding, fuel, such that you are able to get to the destination that you got, that you had in mind when you first started the key of the car, the ignition. And then let's make use of a travel agent. The travel agent in this instance is the research officers. It is so important that we look at the research officers so that we can plan the journey, so that we understand on the roadmap which direction are we going. Um, and, and really have that impact strategy before we start driving and not as we are navigating on the map and, and um, end up in the wrong place and having all sorts of conflicts. You all know how it feels to be lost and you have wasted so much fuel and the fuel was for something else. And I can go on and on on this. But imagine if we do it 
even better if we invite the a local person. Now, local in our context means wherever the destination is, whoever will be using this particular research outputs, invite them with you on the journey from the word go, and that would be co-production. At the end of the day, really what we are talking about is knowledge exchange for the better, and we'll be able to get to our destination more impactful and much sooner. That's one of the lessons that we have learned um, so far. Uh, Mr. Chair, I said that was my second last slide. I would really not do a good justice to my president-elect position if I'm not able to share a little bit what the Southern Africa Research and Innovation Management Association is all about. Um, so we, it is in the name, so it's Research Association, where we have research, um, research and technology um, innovation managers, and, and we share a platform. And if you have time, if you can visit our website to see what the kind of, so we've got training, you will see customized training and professional development, advocacy, uh, awareness raising. We've got the three different portfolios, we research management portfolio, we've got the innovation and technology transfer, and we've got an Africa engagement portfolio where we're trying to ensure that we can go beyond the Southern African community that we're currently having. So every community, every region have their own community. So you've got your Warima, I'm sure many of you are aware, you've got your Irima. So all the Rimas eventually, uh, we're looking at how can we converge and make sure that we are able to cross fertilize the knowledge similar to what you are doing here within the African continent um, and beyond. And then um, maybe just to mention that we are trying to also promote professionalization um, so that research management is actually seen upon as a profession. Uh, so there is the International Professional Recognition Council uh, where I'm also uh, a member of, where we are looking at how to be professionalize research management so that even your administrator can apply. So we have the research administrator uh, professional status, which is your, your first step. From there, you got your research manager professional status, and then you've got your senior research manager professional status. And that is basically accreditation in the research management and technology uh, management profession to say that this is actually a profession that you can be treated like a chartered accountant or a similar equivalent. And that's what we are looking at at the moment. And so this is my last slide, uh, Mr. Chair. We have our annual conference this year in Mozambique under the theme, It Takes a Village. Uh, in September, and I would love to invite all of you that are able to register and attend because it is really a fantastic platform where we share experiences um, and 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 we really are able to collaborate and 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 really have fruitful conversations to make our jobs in the end easier, but also to make the researchers' work more relevant. And with that, I would like to end off with um, the old African proverb that you all know, which is until the lion learns how to write, every story will glorify the hunter. If we are not able to share our African stories, um, our African experiences, we will forever be dependent on various other experiences which may or may not be relevant to our circumstances and our context. And with that, Mr. Chair, I would like to thank you and everybody else for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anna Matros Goreses. Um, This is fantastic and uh, that is a uh, a very good way to end it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think um, this speech warrants a round of applause. So please, if you can just use your reaction button to help me to uh, say thank you to uh, Dr. Anna for work well done. And um, honestly, I liked your analogy, the analogy of the moving car. Of the moving car. 
And I think um, this really helps us as researchers. Uh, you started with um, saying the disconnect that exists between the researchers, the scientists, and the realities of context, the realities of context. Um, so um, really, science goes beyond publishing in the journals. Um, so using this analogy, you emphasize the need of getting out of the car, and at least sometimes getting out of the car and walking on the road. Um, this is important. It's important to think in that way because then you will be able to feed the realities of what your research should be doing. The lives we need to be saving the development that we need to be impacting. But if we stay only in the car, we lose connection with that reality. So this is really uh, fantastic. And um, I like the aspect you emphasize, the need for African scientists to pursue impact-focused research. Honestly, if we do not do this, um, it becomes only abstract. Um, there should be a platform um, of translating what we do. Mm. Uh, one of the courses we are running now, um, we call it um, Quality, Productivity, and Impact. And uh, last night, we are looking at formulating a research question. And one mm. of the things that uh, we I liked it last night is having the end in mind before you start. Having the end in mind. What actually do you want to achieve in the end of the day? Then that will help you to set the strategies of getting there. Um, and so because every piece of research needs to have a product it delivers to the community, to the society. And so it is important, colleagues, for us to think of impact um, when we do research. Um, you mentioned lots of aspects to think about in the in the in the ecosystem of it falls. Um, you mentioned having clear objectives, um, having consideration for ethics, um, outlying and identifying potential risk early in the process issues of funding, um, policy, industry engagement metrics, um, several of these. And um, once I listen to you, um, I really have um, um, two um, um, sentence summaries, really, um, that um, can categorize researchers. Um, you have one I call I call it blinded researchers, blinded who are novice to what is happening, um, and that will lead to a fall. And on the other hand, I have those the all-knowing researchers who do not care about their their, their knowledge is sufficient, and that will also lead to a fall. Um, so between these two, um, I see that. We need a help. And where you concluded by saying um, the, the, the local person who can take you on that tour to show you where uh, things are, we need that help as researchers and we need to connect. And that brings me to um, what I started by saying before multidisciplinary research is important because then we're able to identify. A different aspect. If we work in silos, then we are bound to make mistakes because we are not able to see the different um, challenges that are there in our research journal. So, um, colleagues, um, I think this has been insightful uh, for me, and I believe it is also for you. So, I will say a big thank you to Dr. Anna Matros go recess. And uh, it's fantastic what you're doing at the um, Namibia uh, University of Science and Technology. 
even though you mentioned it's a new university, but um, the innovation platform you have set up there is really awesome. And I think uh, that would be a learning curve for many universities going forward. Um, a few questions came um, um, and uh, I would like to share them so that you can respond to them. Um, before we let you go. The first one is, how is the academic researchers' performance appraisal structured in your university? Do they get re remunerated for the research output they produce? And if so, um, yes. So please um, see if you can respond to that. Okay. No, thank you uh, for that question. And this is always a contention you know, issue. Um, so yes, so what we have done is we have various criteria. So we have introduced what we call the research and development framework. And I'm sure you're all aware of it. The, R the RDF, it is based on a UK system. And we are following that. And within that one, we have categorized. So we have two tracks. Let me start like that. We've got two tracks at the university. We have your teaching track and you've got your research track. So your teaching track is your normal. You've got your, let's say you start with a technician, then you've got your junior researcher, uh, sorry, your junior lecturer, your uh, lecturer, your senior lecturer, all the way to professor. And then we're on the researcher track. We've got your, again, you've got your research assistant and then your junior junior researcher, researcher, senior researcher, all the way up to postdoc, um, professor, and so on. So those two tracks are there. So we've got incentives for each one of the tracks, and obviously your workload is adjusted according to that. So we have a flip, we flip it. So if you're teaching track, you have your 60% teaching and 30% research. And when you're your researcher track, you've got your 60% research and your 30% teaching as a sort of uh, a ballpark figure. Obviously, your, your professors are doing more research. Uh, so we do get then um, incentivized for the products that you develop. Um, and that is covered within our intellectual property uh, policy and guidelines. So it really depends that is then allocated to the inventor um, and to then the university and then the industry that's interested in, in, in that particular product. Also for promotion purposes, for professional uh, promotions, Okay, I think uh, Dr. Anna is having network issues. Let's see if she correct that. Way of how we calculate incentives for researchers. All right, thank you very much for that. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, the second question um, is quite a long one, I hope. Um, um, let me read it. One of the important challenges facing any researcher is to discuss dislocate the thesis from the shelves and introduce the outcomes of the research to stakeholders, despite the innovative impact of the research. But still, there is huge limitation to get the chance to get our research, research on with our societies, most often due to scarcity of resources. What is the tactics which researchers can follow to convince stakeholders and hence getting our research outcome in contact with our society? Did you get that? Yes, I got that. That was quite oh, a lot. But a it long is, one, it eh? is really, <laughs> it is, but it's really a very, very crucial element. And that's what I was saying when we asked the local to come with you in the car so that you know exactly where to go and have an impactful study. But now, but, and, and, and maybe we can have a conversation about this. What we're doing is we've got um, particularly a, a group. Indigenous knowledge, if you have noticed, is one of our key areas of research. Um, 
And what we do is we, we do quite a lot of co-designing and co-production with them. Now, how do we convince them? And we were actually having this conversation just two weeks ago to say, as much as we are remunerating our researchers, you know, whether it's promotion to professorship, or whatnot, we are never going back to the community actually to remunerate them as well. So we've, we are now looking at, we've not started it, so I can't speak to whether it works or not. But we've now started to looking at how do we um, uh, introduce a community award. So as much as, and, and that award is something that we are busy discussing because, you know, for you and me, a nice sort of, you know, like if you go to the Oscars and you have a, a golden sort of a statue, that will mean a lot because people see it, but that might not mean a lot for the community. And that's one thing that we're saying that our communities are over-researched. They are saturated. They can no longer take researchers coming and asking them the same questions. Over, So we need to look at how do we, uh, how do we coin that award? And that's one of the things that we've been talking about. The one definite, definite thing that we are looking at is always the feedback loop. And that's why we are able to, to get communities on board and make them feel part of the research. This works in most cases, but not many of the cases. Uh, so we still have to also, um, you know, crack that nut, but um, really to understand what award would be valuable enough for them to keep coming back and be part of our research is something that we are still looking at. And definitely money is not the answer. Um, so, so, so we are still also grappling with that same fact. So it would be lovely if the, the, the person asking the question can maybe share their experiences so we can also learn from that. But it's something we've been really grappling about. We have thought of an award and, you know, but we're still just trying to figure out how best to make it more valuable for them. All right, thank you. So you agree with my my layman conclusion that researchers always need help. So now you're looking for help. <laughs> How to solve this uh, <laughs> this issue. All right, that is uh, really fantastic. Um, please, researchers, we need to look at for help when we need it. And final question I have I collected is, how can we be part of Starima? Somebody is asking that question. Very, very easy. Um, it's uh, it's really open. You can have, it's a membership-based association. So you are able to join either as an individual or as an institution. Um, there is a very minimal fee attached to it. But then once you are part of it, you get obviously the benefits of, of some of the training. And also the one thing I did not mention is that our training um, has points so the more training you attend, um, the easier chance you stand to go up the professionalization track that I presented. So uh, these are some of the benefits, but um, it's really easy to join, uh, uh, really. And, and um, if there's anything, if you are struggling, please just drop an email and we can have a look at it. But it's really a fantastic platform, just like your own, to be able to share and to be with like-minded people and we can discuss a lot of um, things that are really relevant for some of our, our context, because I think context mm -hmm. is quite important. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have information on your website on the processes? To yes. Join? Yes. All right. Okay. So and please, also, colleagues. Yeah. On the website, we've got a huge... Um, uh, volume of information that is freely available, like how to set up a technology transfer office, um, how to make sure you've got the right skills in your research offices, for example, we've got a professionalization competency framework. So all these documents are for free. It's available. You can download it um, even without becoming a member because it's important just to share experiences and so forth. Yeah. All right. Thank you, um, Dr. Um, Anna Matro. Please just yeah. Anna is absolutely fine. <laughs> it's enough. Yeah, I, I I know I know I'm not getting the other ones very well, but uh, please uh, just pardon me. Um, I just want to say a big thank you again. We appreciate uh, your coming, and um, as I said before we started, um, 
um, on our platform, once you are in, you are in, meaning we will come back to you again because we will need your your expertise uh, going forward. So we appreciate this. Um, the platform we have is um, full of many young Africans who want to do great things. So we feel that people like you who have experience have a role to play in supporting their, their growth. So we thank you again for the time you have given. And um, on behalf of the, the everybody on the platform, I have to say a big condolence to you and your community for your colleagues um, you lost um, just before you joined this platform. Please um, extend our condolences to the family. All right, if you leave now, it's, you, are, you are forgiven, so no problem. Uh, but I have to show uh, our viewers our participants um some of our last slide um the next edition of the seminar series comes up on the 26th of may um and as you can see the speaker is open discussion everyone everyone we want you we want to really take time to dig into um, the topic we have for that day making innovation research work the stakeholders and their roles Please come on board to share your experiences so that we can um, have um, a rich discussion that day. So it will be an open discussion. We will divide ourselves to different groups to get feedback on the issues surrounding this. Okay. Then of course, um, the Dr. Warren's Research Tips and Tricks, uh, the 26th edition is on ignorance, the outcome that beautifies research. 31st of May, 2024, the time remains 1 to 2 p.m. GMT. So please, if you want to know ignorance, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing um, for research? Come, come, and then you will discover that it is intriguing that we set out to answer questions, but we come out with not answers, but many more questions. All right, which means that the more we look, the less we see. So if you're not an SFI member, um, SFI starting from 2023, um, became um, membership and, and association organization. Um, members have loss of benefits, loss of benefits, and um, you can see them on the screen. Um, it is annual membership. So a membership is valid January to December. So the longer you wait to join, the less you benefit from the um, benefits that we have. I mentioned this previously. Um, the SFI Research Journal is out now. Um, we are still fine-tuning things, but you can go to um, our website, and then you can see for yourself what we have there. Um, now we want to recruit because it is um, a multidisciplinary journal. So we are looking for associate editors, sectional editors. We are looking for reviewers. So um, I have put the link on the chat box, please, if you're interested. We're not looking for those who have experience only. If you want to learn, if you want to be an intern, please um, join and indicate interest, and we will evaluate. We evaluate um, all applications and we appoint um, those who will be functioning. All right, um, that is all I have um, this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining, and uh, I wish you a fabulous week ahead. Um, I think I can now um, um, unmute you. You can unmute yourself if you just want to say something before you leave, but that is all for you this evening. Thank you for coming. Thanks for everything. Prof. Right. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor and Dr. Anne.
Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.